Hello and welcome to the Market Advantage NBA podcast. I'm Big Italy 42. He is Jason Gilbo at jgilbo11. Talking about some pricing discrepancies, of course, as always, and not a lot of significant ones for tonight, despite the fact that we have a uh, nice full slate of games. Looks like 11 on tap tonight, so um, second huge slate we've had this week. But starting off with the biggest differences here, Bismack Biombo, not a guy that you're rushing out to play, especially on a huge slate, but 4900 on. DraftKings, 4,000 on FanDuel. He's a guy who didn't have a great game last time out against the Spurs, but obviously that being a tough matchup. Now facing a Milwaukee team that's one of the worst rebounding teams in the NBA. So he certainly has the rebounding potential. Everything else is kind of a bonus with him if he scores, if he gets blocks, anything like that, because you certainly aren't banking on that. You're playing this guy because he's cheap, and you're hoping he gets you 12, 13 rebounds and maybe a couple putbacks. Yeah, I mean, he's got 25 points in the last two games combined, but... Uh, I really doubt that continues into tonight. Um, not that it's a tough matchup, but that's just not his role in the offense. So I think at his price, I mean, I don't know. It could be a double-double night for him, but uh, highly unlikely. Yeah, definitely not a guy that you're uh, you're rushing to play. Um, Cody Zeller, another guy that you don't love, but you're always looking for value. He's been a solid value recently. He's 4700 on DraftKings, 4000 on FanDuel, and uh, a lot of guys priced around there um, at on FanDuel. He had uh, just 16.4 FanDuel points his last game, but the two before that, 29-7 and 33-6. You figure somewhere in between those uh, those two types of games is where he's going to fall tonight. Um, he's been playing 32, then 28, then 24 minutes. Uh, matchup against Memphis isn't, you and I were talking a couple minutes ago, isn't quite the tough matchup that it once was for players. And um, he's going to be locked into about mid-20s in minutes, assuming that it's not a blowout. And maybe even more because they just don't have a lot of uh, a lot of size down there with Al Jefferson out. Yeah, I mean he's going to play some minutes. Um, he's got to stay on the court. He's been in a little bit of foul trouble lately, but um, I mean I guess he's a not not a bad play just for his price on Fanduel, but definitely probably not in play on DK there. Uh, it's a little too expensive for me. Yeah, and then a guy that definitely is in play, um, John Luer, kind of the opposite, forty five hundred on Fanduel. Uh, 5,200 on DraftKings, and this is a guy that's kind of taken over the Marquise, Markeith Morris role, um, but actually been producing, unlike uh, what Markeith was, I guess, was not doing earlier in the season. But John Lure has been solid. Um, over his last five games, double-digit scoring in each one, 40, 15, 32, 25, 25 fantasy points in those games, and doesn't seem like anything's going to change anytime soon with Markeith getting back in the rotation and playing big minutes or anything like that. So um, with Alex Lynn especially kind of going to take a hit, a big hit today, assuming that Tyson Chandler's back and he's supposed to be, then John Lewis seems like he's uh, now all of a sudden just the only one value from the Suns. Yeah, yeah, I really like Lord tonight. Uh, Portland's front court, not, not really great defensively. And you look at Lord, he seems like he's got a pretty big role in the offense now, and he has um, four double-digit shot attempts in the last five games there. So definitely... Uh, you know, definitely taking on a bigger role, and it looks like Markeith could be done in Phoenix, so he could be the guy for uh, the rest of the way. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, the next guy continues to be a little bit overpriced for his bench role on FanDuel, seventy four hundred dollars, but still just sixty six on DraftKings. Victor Oladipo, guy who hasn't been playing huge minutes, but he's been upper twenties, if not low thirties, for the most part here, and. He's a guy, I mean, you're you're certainly taking a GPP risk with the guy because he's not going to play huge minutes, but he is the primary scorer and facilitator off the bench for this team. And it's not an ideal matchup, but it's going to be no J.R. Smith tonight. Maybe we see Amon Shumpert come back. Um, he, they say he's cleared to play. He's hoping he can play. But he may end up just seeing a whole bunch of one of either Mo Williams or Matthew Delavadova there, which... If those guys are forced to play big minutes, that's a pretty big mismatch for him, and I think he could have some nice uh, sneaky upside there if uh, if that's the case. Yeah, I'm definitely with you there. Uh, FanDuel, I mean, really a deep deep GPP play just because he's so expensive, but DraftKings definitely worth the risk. And our last game, uh, Orlando was just awful against Cleveland. I mean, they, uh, they I remember he pulled their starters, and that was it for like the rest of the game. So <laughs> uh, look for them to. Uh, hopefully bounce back here in this one yeah definitely because people are going to look at the game log see that, that was his worst game in his last 10 and maybe that drops his ownership even lower but uh, like like we said it's it's a gpp play but one that certainly does have some upside um greg monroe next up seventy one hundred dollars on DraftKings, 77 on fanduel and it's kind of frustrating you and i have kind of talked about him a couple times here where 
his floor is great. He's had an awesome floor, especially on DraftKings at his price where, you know, he's kind of in any decent matchup, just a lock for 30 to 35 fantasy points, but hasn't really shown that upside. I mean, had a couple bigger games earlier in the season, but hasn't shown the monster upside that we know he has. Um, and in a matchup tonight against a Toronto team that, you know, no Jonas Valanciunas, it's Bismack Biombo down low, who, I mean, he's a big body, but he's not exactly an elite defender either. So, I mean, one of these days, Greg Monroe's going to have his big game and win somebody a lot of money, but it just feels like they, they don't want to play him more than seemingly 32, 33 minutes most nights. So, I mean, that kind of caps his upside, but he still makes for a really nice cash game play. Yeah, yeah. If you want a, an, an easy double-double, he's the guy each night. Um, especially, I do like the DK double bonus there just because it gets you that little extra, which he really needs at his price. You're kind of hoping for a little more out of your centers, but um, the guy provides a decent floor. And like you said, Toronto, decent matchup for him tonight, um, which is by Umbo down there. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, talking about one more guy here, we've got uh, Kimball Walker, a guy who's been really frustrating people recently, to say the least. 7,000 on DraftKings, 78 on FanDuel. He was a guy that um, had a horrible game in the game against Golden State, one where I personally had a ton of him thinking, you know, Kemba's going to shoot. Well, actually, I think he had two less shot attempts than Curry and scored, what was it, like 38 less points. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, either way, you compare anyone to Steph Curry and they're going to look terrible. But um, a historically bad performance for Kemba Walker in that game. Kind of had a little bit of bounce backs recently. Recently, um, since then, 36.7 against Chicago, 29.8 against Detroit, and only 25 minutes of blowout. Wasn't a good performance, but 40 against Miami. So now, tonight, he gets a matchup against Mike Conley in Memphis. Not a good matchup for him, but like we said, Memphis isn't quite the defensive stalwarts that they were in the past. I mean, they play a little bit higher or faster of a pace than they used to, and while you're not, you don't want to you know, go attack the rim with Marcus Gasol down there, but that's not really Kimball Walker's game anyway. He's more of a jump shooter. So um, Kimball Walker still has some upside. He's the guy that's going to kind of be overlooked tonight, I think, on a, on a night like this where there's just so many point guard options. Yeah, and if you want the numbers from that game, he shot two for 16 uh, against Golden State, so just a, an awful night. Yeah, but, Kim, uh, <laughs> Kimball looking forward to becoming Kobe when, he, when he's older. <laughs> I mean, the matchups, it's not – bad it's not a great one either but i mean definitely if you're looking for a low on play it's going to be Kemba tonight out of the point guard spot just because people still fear memphis is one of the elite defensive teams which they're really just not anymore yeah absolutely and uh, that's going to wrap things up for us for the market advantage find us on twitter at df cafe subscribe to our youtube channel we got lots of other great content at dailyfantasycafe.com